Hello, Goranges are on view yet again. This time we're on view for the 22nd of January. Yes. Still January. Yes. Gosh. Uh, yes, so we're in the warehouse. Uh, what's in the warehouse? Well, a whole array of fine things, of course. Um, what are we looking at here? So, um, well, behind you, typically, stepping backwards here, here's a nice early-ish chest of drawers, probably once sat on a stand. It's got the original, I would say, drop handles, which is quite a nice feature. It's in oak. Um, it's not going to set the world on fire, but it's a nice, honest thing. I think the plinth foot was later, but uh, 1126. There we are, nice bit of oak furniture for you. Um, a sort of striking mid-century chair, lot 1108, uh, with, with sort of pleasingly weathered and worn uh, button leather. Uh, there's a stool next to it that looks like it's, it's uh, of the same era. Uh, further on, re-offer here, I think this mid-century, let's have a look, yeah, this is a re-offer, it's not re-labeled, so I don't know if that's back in, but you may well see it. Otherwise, let's have a look at the floor for a change, we don't always look down, and uh, there's always a, a good selection of carpets and rugs in the sale. This is lot 1113, that's a sort of prayer rug, um, sort of Caucasian, it won't be expensive, be sort of 50, 80 pounds or so. Uh, there's a quite a nice jazzy key limb here. Um, at the moment, we see more kingdoms being sold as upholstery on the stools than we do actually as being rugs and carpets. But there we are, nice jazzy colours. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the website, and of course you are, then uh, you will see that we now use these rather snazzy carpet, carpet clips and we hang the rugs and you get you're a week. You're very pleased about that, aren't you? I'm very pleased about that. <laughs> Huge development, massive progress at Gorringes. And the great thing I'm told about it is because you hang them up, you can see all the holes and tears in them. <laughs> which is really useful because there's nothing worse than... A, us selling a carpet and someone getting it and going, it's got a hole in it. And we go, well, we, we did tell you that, but you didn't read the condition report or what have you. So no, if it's in the photo, it's so much easier. <laughs> How about a spinning wheel? Not a lot of people want spinning wheels, but this one's got a lovely sort of weathered painted effect, lot 1117, that might help it on its way to finding a new home. Then we'll, um, we'll just sort of slide down the line here and give you an idea of what else is here. We've got some nice old panelled back uh, chairs, we've got less old laid back chairs there, a selection of oak furniture as ever, there's quite a sort of funky coloured um, club armchair lot 1061 in faded and possibly dog scuffed, <laughs> has the look of a chair where a dog might have enjoyed um, using it, um, but yeah nicely weathered appearance to it. There's a um, an oak, banded oak chest, again, of some age, not the original handles, I'm sorry to say, but uh, not a bad looking chest, that 1083, and a, a very classic sort of Regency mahogany secretaire, yep, there we go, secretaire bookcase. I mean, these have never been cheaper in 35 years that I've known. Um, just most people regard them as too big and too dark, but if you want one, now is really a good time to buy. That's lot 1085, nice architectural top to it. I particularly like this cornice, this motif here. It's just a bit more interesting than usual. Uh, there's a nice pine dresser. I think we sold one on Monday, it did very well. Lot 1088, this one. Uh, got a little bit of carving on, the, uh, on these, these struts across and um, it's been well loved, but it's ready to be repurposed and reused again. Big old Victorian dressing table. If that's too old for you, how about this mid-century one sitting here, lot 1055, with, look at that, perfect fit, that's great, with the it? original stool, and that's in teak. So hopefully something for everybody in the warehouse. Plenty more carpets and rugs. Do look at the website. We'll go and look in the main room. So here we are in the strong room. We're going to do it in sort of reverse order this morning just to uh, keep you on your toes. Uh, looking at jewellery, how about uh, a brooch of stylized foliate design? Uh, you may be thinking, yes, what a great idea. But well, there we go. Look at that. Wow. You don't get many like wow. that. That is wow, isn't it? So it's multi-gem set um, in, in gold, um, nicely made. Uh, got a little, got the sort of markings up the top there. This is lot one eight seven six. Estimate three to four hundred. Give you an idea of scale, and see if I can get recruited for the Antiques Roadshow. It would fit on the lapel, about that sort of size. Suits you. There we go. Um, one eight seven eight. Alternative foliate design brooch. This looks a bit like George Jensen, but it's not. This is an English silver one. Lot one eight seven eight. Forty to sixty pounds. Something different again. 
How about that? 18 karat gold. It's got nice weight to it and then pearls set to the top. Nice sort of floral design with this sort of rough textured base down the bottom. Got a bit of style to it. That's about 1883. Estimate two to 300 pounds. And finally, in our floral brooch design options, 1884, look at that, that's an orchid, I would say, uh, with a pearl set into the middle, 18 karat gold again, in at least two colors with different texturing. Uh, lost its pin, you'll need to find a, get a pin done, but there we go, uh, that's estimate 250, 300. So there we go, nice selection of foliate brooches. We don't want foliate brooches, you say, well, how about amethyst brooches then? Two rather striking examples here, 1897, look at that. That's, a, um, that's set with diamonds and Baroque pearls all the way around. So we'll look at the back, there we go. It's got some age to it. It's not quite sort of Belle Epoque, I think it's a bit later than that, but still nice thing. Estimate 250, whoops, 250 to 350. You say that's a bit ornate for me, I want a plainer one. Okay, well, how about that then? <laughs> Showing the sizes, the, the amethysts are, yeah. Similar. If anything, this is a bigger amethyst, older, I would say. Nicely set with Dark. these uh, rose-cut diamonds all around the edge. Uh, beautifully done at the back. Looks to me to be 1910 to 20, that sort of date, thereabouts. 1899. Mm. Bit more of an estimate on it. Four to six hundred pounds for that one. So that's your amethyst sorted. Uh, this caught my eye. 1896. Lovely back. Look at that engraved. Oniswaki Mali Ponce engraved to it. Sort of royal cipher to the back of the gold frame. And there's a nice early portrait miniature, but with some horrible damage to the right hand side um, that is going to rather spoil it. So the estimate is 150 to 200. Um, and then again, we like to show you different things. Here's something different. This is what they tend to call a trench watch. Um, a sort of development of an early wristwatch in silver, a bit like a fob watch in form, um, with these wire work lugs, uh, but then drilled through the outer hunter case so that um, you can still tell the time, but hopefully it doesn't get damaged quite so easily. That's lot 1888. So there we go. Interesting as ever selection. Let's go and look at the small. So what's in the main room? Well, behind me, just to confuse you, making you turn around all across the top, silk opera programmes. Ah. Mostly Royal Opera House, various years. I can see one's 1986, but a lot of them will be much earlier, sort of nearer 1910. Uh, and that was very much the way of some of these gala performances were printed onto a silk backing and, and kept as souvenirs. Uh, and so those have a sort of collectible nature. They are running lots 1460 to 1467. So always something different as ever at Oranges. Uh, how about these? These are Norman Meredith, um, original... Um, illustrations, I'm sure. Man was made for joy and woe. This one, lot 1684 and 1685 alongside it is uh, the donkey ride. Chris Beetle's labels on the back where they were exhibited and purchased from originally. So there we are, a couple of interesting things there. Uh, this one, it's caught your eye, didn't it? Yes, that's pretty. Uh, Norman Lloyd, sort of Australian British painter. Um, with a good track record, plenty online. This one's called Paris in the Spring. Nice colours, quite a nice impressionistic touch. That is lot 1673. Uh, aside from, oh, and then finally, I'll also touch on four um, original cartoons by Peter Brooks. So there's Tony Blair sort of bridging the dollar and the euro. Uh, Johnny Sleepwalker of Cameron uh, there. And then two featuring uh, Theresa May in The Sound of Music. <laughs> Um, lot 1677 and thereabouts, so uh, they won't be hugely expensive. Brooks is quite a nice name, but these things tend to date and people forget the, the reason they were significant at, at, at the time, so they sort of drift. But uh, interesting things nevertheless. Um, otherwise, down here, what can I share with you? Well, how about a Watts of Fenchurch? Early-ish Victorian mahogany timepiece, just the one hole, so it's it's not striking, which means it's less noisy in the house. So, so 1389, back as a re-offer. Up above, here's a classic sort of mixed lot of oriental bits. So we get a sort of Chinese pierced porcelain dish, and we get a, a pruner's pattern jar that's lost its cover, a Blanc de Chine Quan Yin, a bronzy brass vase with a dragon, and then one of these concentric balls carved from a single piece of stone. So um, 
these concentric balls, we used to see lots of them in ivory. Now that ivory is banned, you don't, but there's one in stone, must have taken hours. The whole lot's probably worth 40, 50 quid because nothing's of great age, but it's just a sort of mixed lot that, that does appear here and, and you know, finds a new home. Some of it goes to China, some of it stays closer. Then carry on backwards, a number of Chinese ceramics, uh, textiles in particular, um, silkwork panels of some age, five or six in the lot here. Uh, lot number 1383. Uh, there's clock sets, there's um, tobacco jars that are reproductions. We've got models of Concorde over here and a whole host of other Concorde and other related items. These have got the Royal Air Force Club uh, logo on these cups and saucers. And then we've got some uh, Air France bottle open. Look, shaped as Concorde. Yes. See, great fun. So a little Concorde mixture, quite collectible still. People love Concorde, of course. It's such an iconic uh, aeroplane. And then uh, something different here. A pair of bronze and ormolu candelabra, lot 1375. Need reattaching. You'll need some work to get those back together. So mm -hmm. it's sort of restoration job there. Decorative pictures. There's a Brangwin I can see behind me. So just a general sort of good mixture as ever. It's this now, Yes. Is this, is it Galley? Well, no, this is what we call Galley style ah. in that it's, um, it's cameo glass. Right. So you've got the layers of glass that, that have been carved away. It's got a signature that looks a bit like Galley, yes. but it's not of the quality. No. So it's, it's a copy um, or a reproduction. Um, May 20, 30 years ago or so, lot 1409, nice. sort of decorative value. Either. That's sweet, isn't it? Mm. 1739, you get the two together. Lovely frame it's got well. a nice look, pretty frame, as you say, isn't it? Old panel. Um, not, oh, there's a sort of indistinct signature because it's a sort of in the style of painting of some age, but not of great age. And then with it, you get this chap with the, with the split in the panel. Mm. Again, of some age without being... Um, a sort of proper old master, but 1739, you've got the look there, two together as one lot. So there we go, a good selection as ever. Enjoy looking through the website, come and view it in the room, and we look forward to seeing you on the day. Thank you.